Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crimin Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, disappointing horror and lots of trash. It's my weekly wrap-up. So firstly, before we start, apologies, I have a cold or a virus or something and I feel terrible. So I'm, I'm going to limp through this video uh, and, and see how I do. Normally on a Saturday, I try and film a load of videos for the week. I'm definitely not going to be doing that today. I'm going to be collapsing on the sofa after filming this. Um, so hopefully I'll get I'll feel a bit better tomorrow and I'll get some stuff filmed for the week. But, but we shall see. So because of that, I'm not going to do the normal bit that I do at the end of these Saturday videos where I talk about... Um, what's been on the channel and what's coming up on the channel because I've got no idea what's going to be on the channel next week. I am planning to do some top 10 style videos kind of for the end of the year. So hopefully I'll get I'll, I'll get at least one of those made. Um, right, anyway, let's talk about what I've been reading. So I have actually read a ton this week, despite not feeling well. Uh, so I've got 10 books to talk about today that, that I've finished. Um, so let me go through those. Before I do that, though, um, so I'm now at 35 books for my Read What You Own Challenge. So over a third of the way there, which is really good. Um, I said I wanted to finish it in January and it feels like I'm kind of on track to do that, especially as I've got a couple of weeks off uh, second half of December um, and I am prioritising, you know, shorter stuff. I'm, I'm still hitting an average of about 250 pages per book. Um, so of the things I've read so far, I think the average page count was like 248 pages or something like that. So I'm not being ridiculous about it. And I have read some longer things. Um, but yeah, definitely prioritising shorter stuff. Anyway, let me talk to you about what I've read. So I'll just do these in, in order that they were read. Um, so the first thing I read this week, and I think I was probably reading it when I filmed this last week, uh, is Rage by Stephen King from the Backman Books. Oh, sorry. And I'm also really behind in doing my uh, my short videos for the Reboot Your Own Challenge. Um, so I have filmed a few more of those, and I'm, but I'm going to put them up gradually, um, you know, like two or three a day, rather than just dumping them all at once. So yeah, because of because of not feeling very well, I got a bit behind with that. Anyway, let me continue. So first thing was Rage by Stephen King from the Backman book. So an, a very early Stephen King novel. So written, I think, when he was like 18 or something like that. And it does it does feel like a book written by a teenager. A somewhat controversial book um, because it's about a school shooting. So about a, a kid uh, in high school who basically takes his class hostage and, and shoots a couple of teachers. Um King um, has subsequently let it fall out of print because it was connected to some actual high school shootings. Um, so there were, I think, at least two or three shootings where the shooter was discovered to have a copy of the, of, of Rage. Um, and you can kind of see why. I, I, you know, I tend to be against blaming books for terrible things happening. But this is definitely a book that makes a bit of a hero of its uh, of its you know, school shooter, which is not a great thing to be doing. Um, so yeah, this guy basically takes takes his, his class hostage and it ends up feeling uncomfortably like the Breakfast Club or something like that in that they kind of start looking up to him a bit as a rebel. Um, so it's definitely got a very weird tone to it. So yes, I did not particularly enjoy Rage. That was a reread for me. So this was for Remember December, uh, and that was, I think it was reread a book you've completely forgotten. So I knew I'd read it and, and I, I knew kind of roughly what it was about, but I had indeed forgotten all of the details of it. Um, so yes, that was that one. Um, next up after that uh, was a something completely different and really fun. Uh, Burglar in the Closet by Lawrence Block. So one of his Bernie Rodenbar mysteries. So in fact, the second of the Bernie, Bernie Rodenbar mysteries. So Bernie Rodenbar is a kind of like a, a cat burglar. So a guy who like breaks into people's people's houses and, and steals stuff. And he loves stealing stuff. And he's the narrator of the books. And he's a really fun person just to kind of hang out with. His philosophy of life and his you know view of the world is endlessly entertaining. He's a bit like Niles Crane from, from Frasier in some ways, I think. Um, so in this one... As the title suggests, he spends quite a lot of the book in a closet. So he he is, is broken into this apartment. Um, the the owner comes back unexpectedly, and he hides in the closet, and then ends up getting locked in the closet. Um, and it 
it transpires from there. They're all kind of murder mysteries where he ends up being kind of an unwitting witness to the to the murder, um, and then has to try and figure out you know what's actually happened to to prove the innocence of someone. Um, so it was really fun. Just a just a light, entertaining mystery. Lawrence Block is great. Um, I always enjoy his stuff, and this was this was no exception. Um, after that, something something very very different, um, which I still haven't decided if I think was a good book or not. On balance, I think it probably wasn't a good book. I don't know, or at least it's a troubling book. So the, so the book is Tampa by Alyssa Nutting, um, which is a novel but based on a true case of a female high school teacher who seduced one of her students. I forget what grade he was in because we don't have grades over here, so it's not something that really sticks with me, but I think he was supposed to be like 14 or 15. So, you know, uh, a horrible, horrible thing and an interesting book. So written in a very, very matter-of-fact way, the presentation of sex in the book is very frank and graphic and you know will definitely be troubling to, to many people because of that. The reason why I hesitate a bit with this book is it, it is genuinely gripping. It's one of those books where I just found I just kept turning the pages to see what was going to happen. And you kind of know what's going to happen. You know that this woman is going to end up being caught. You know that she's, you know, she's going to be tried because it's based on this true case and the facts of that case are fairly well known. But it still managed to be gripping. I was invested in in the characters in some way, even though the, you know, the central character is is an appalling person. You do become invested in her, and you want to know what's going to happen to her. So it was an it was an interesting and gripping read, but I wouldn't have said it was a good, you know, necessarily a a, a good book. It's one of those books where. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of it was, what it, what it was trying to tell us. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of a literary work, so you expect it to be doing something more than being a diverting read, if that makes sense. So, you know, something like Burger in the Closet, I don't expect Burger in the Closet to be telling me anything. It's just supposed to be entertainment. Tamper is clearly not supposed to be entertainment, but I don't know what it was trying to tell me. Um, so, yeah, I think the, what my personal jury is still out on that one. Um, after that, another book I read for Remember December, and this was for the prompt about, you know, find out what you really think about the book, about a book. So the book was Zoe by Dirk Wittenborn. So I read this book when I was a teenager, and it made a real impression on me. I, I, I like, remember having read it. I didn't remember much, like, detail about it, other than the fact it's about a young woman from a small town who becomes a, a model and, and about, you know, kind of her successful life thereafter. Um, but there was one thing that came flooding back to me as soon as I read it in this book, which is very near the start of the book. Um, there's this this couple of guys going around like like burgling people, like but basically breaking into people's houses while the people were there and holding them at gunpoint and stealing their stuff. And I really remembered the details of of that. So they actually end up like cooking breakfast for the people that they're imprisoning because um, they're kind of nice guys in a weird way. Um, so they get they get known as the breakfast bandits, and I, that came flooding back to me as soon as I read it. And I can see why it made an impression on me as a, as a teenager. So written in the eighties, it's set in the seventies. It's all about you know kind of sex and drugs and rock and roll. Mick, Mick Jagger you know makes a an appearance as kind of a cameo character in this. Um, and it's an interestingly constructed book in that it's basically a love story. But it's told between between Zoe, the main character, and this guy. Um, but it's told from the perspective of another character, a photographer who has, uh, you know, who who has come to know Zoe and kind of kind of what's the word like discovered her. He's the person um, who got her kind of on the map of of other photographers and, and launched her modelling career. So it's told from his perspective, but he's not the you know he's not one of the main two characters. So that was quite interesting. But overall, it just, it was fine. It was entertaining. It was interesting, but it wasn't a fantastic book. It certainly wasn't as good a book as I remember it being. But I can see why as a teenager, I thought it was, it was kind of pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. Um, it's definitely a book that, that teenagers, teenagers would enjoy. I, I enjoyed it. It reminded me a bit, actually, of Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not sure it's quite as good as Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think, I think she does the kind of thing she does really well. But it's one of those books that's just about a character who has an interesting life. So a bit like Harold Robbins or someone like that as well, I suppose. Um, so yes, that was a, a, a fun reread. Um, 
after that, uh, I, another reread, so not one for Remember December. So I've, I read one of the books in this series last month. I've read two this week. So the series is the Molesworth series by Geoffrey Willans and Ronald Searle. So I read How to Be Top uh, and Whiz for Atoms. So these are just pure fun. So they are um, books about a school. So written in the 50s about a schoolboy at a public school in, in like a boarding school in the UK. And it's just his thoughts about school, about the teachers, about the other kids at the school. But written in a very distinctive style with loads of misspellings and like, you know, slang he uses and things like that. It occurred to me this morning that in some ways it's a bit like um, the Bridget Jones books by Helen Fielding in that you the, the way in which they were written, they are written, is very much a part of what makes the books enjoyable. So that distinctive style, that just like with the Bridget Jones books, if someone they're, like they're incredibly easy to pastiche because you can you can just write a few sentences, you know, um, you know, Andy spoke to six today, you know, VV good or something like that, and and people would know it was supposed to be Bridget Jones. The same with the Molesworth books. If you've read them, you will instantly recognise the style, and there's a real joy in that that style. Um, it's a, a lot of the fun of the books just comes from Molesworth's way of describing the world. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoyed both of those. It's only short reads, good good ones for the Read What You Read Challenge, uh, but really, really fun. Um, after that, a book I didn't enjoy, which most people, so this is actually the book club pick for my Patreon book club this month. Um, and everyone else it pretty much seems to be really, really enjoying it, but I didn't like it at all. Uh, that's Mayfly by CJ Lead, um, which I had heard kind of mixed things about going into it. It's kind of okay. I can see what the author was trying to do, but I just, if I'm honest, found it a little bit annoying. Um, so about this character, this this woman, Maeve, Mayfly, who works as a like a Disney princess, basically, but who has hom- homicidal urges um, and ends up killing a load of people, essentially. It's, it's compared to um, American Psycho, often in reviews, and I can kind of see why, that, why it is, in that it is a book where... You know, the central character is is a serial killer and is, you know, kind of semi-sympathetic in some ways, or, or at least they're the one giving you their version of events. So you kind of end up being a bit bought into the story, if that makes sense. Um, it was interesting. It was enjoyably gory at times. Uh, and the thing that I found a bit distracting about it, I think, is much like American Psycho, it's packed with, like, pop culture references. Um in this, there's lots of references to books, particularly The Story of the Eye by Georges Bataille, um, and also references to like music and, and movies and things like that as well. It's set in Hollywood, and there is a nice sense of kind of like kind of the faded glamour of Hollywood in it, which I quite enjoyed. And, and Mayfly's grandmother was like a movie star. Um, so that side of it I quite enjoyed. The book references I just found distracting and a bit much, and, and a bit like the author was trying to show you how many clever books she's read um the music references i really i actually really enjoyed so there's some interesting little facts about various various like pop songs and things like that most of which are ones with kind of a horror theme like pet cemetery by the ramones or the monster mash or things like that and i discovered on spotify a playlist which i'll try and remember to link to in the description for the video of those songs which i've been really enjoyed listening to so i've enjoyed that playlist um, more than I enjoyed the book, if I'm honest. So yeah, wasn't wasn't a huge fan, unfortunately. But as I said, lots of the people who've been reading it with me as part of my uh, Patreon book club have really enjoyed it. Um, right, we're getting there. So, so that was my TBR for the month finished, apart from Buddy Read. So there's three books I'm doing Buddy Reads of this month. Um, two of which I'm actually currently reading, so I'll talk about those in a minute, and one of which I haven't got yet. But with Buddy Reads, you know, you 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 and the buddy need to sync up and decide when the right time to read the book is. So it, it wasn't the right time for me to start those, despite them being on my TBR. So what I've done is I've done the thing I said I was going to do in my stupid TBR game that I did in my December TBR video, where I picked this book, so uh, randomly, albeit the odds were slightly weighted in its favour, it turns out, for various reasons. Um, this is the first book I'm reading in my like off-piste uh, reading for the month, with the idea being that each... So when I finish this book, I need to pick another book that has a connection to this book. And then when I finish that book, I'll pick a book that has a connection to that, and so on and so forth. Um, so this, anyway, is The Witches 2, The Trial uh, by James Dark. 
a very trashy 80s uh, British horror novel, um, which I really enjoyed. So I enjoyed the first book in this series more than I expected to. Um, I enjoyed this one, I guess, as much as I expected to, because I knew I'd enjoyed the first one. Um, but it was fun. So this is set during the, you know, the kind of witch, witch trials era in the UK about this guy called John Ferris, who's um, his, like, beloved has been kidnapped by this evil witch finder um, and he's he's trying to to rescue her through the through the course of the books in this one he gets captured himself and tried as a wizard uh, which is quite a fun scene and there's just there's just loads of fun entertaining stuff going on in this including a, a long section where he meets up with it, like this theatre troupe which was which was quite fun so I enjoyed it what it led me to was another book so um the, there's a character in this, the, the leader of the theatre troupe, who's called Caleb Thorne. Um, and when I was reading it, I, I was like, that name rings a bell. Why does that name ring a bell? I checked on my Kindle and I have a book from a series called Caleb Thorne. So it's a series of Westerns from the 70s when in the UK, loads of like cheap, trashy, rip-off Westerns were written to cash in on the you know the success of, of authors like Louis L'Amour. Um, so this Caleb Thorne book, uh, so the first in the series, uh, which is called The First Shot, by an author called uh, L.J. Coburn, I think. Um, yeah, L.J. Coburn. So I thought, okay, well, I'll read that next because there's a character in this called Caleb Thorne and there's a character in the Caleb Thorne books, clearly called Caleb Thorne. Anyway, it turns out that L.J. Coburn is a pseudonym for Lawrence James. Um, James Dark, also a pseudonym for Lawrence James. So a double connection there. So same character name and actually written by the same person. Um, so Lawrence James was a tremendously prolific author in the UK in the 70s and 80s. Typically wrote published stuff under pseudonyms, wrote all sorts of different stuff. So horror, westerns. He wrote loads of kind of books about like youth culture. So like kind of books about the Hells Angels and things like that. One of which I've got somewhere um, which is called, I can't remember what it's called. Is it called Guardian Angel? I think it's called Guardian Angel and published under the name Mick Norman. So he wrote a ton of different things. So anyway, I, I went on to read Caleb, uh, Caleb Thorne book one, um, which again was, was fun. So a very trashy Western set during the Civil War, but starts just before the Civil War. Um, l- loads of like quite dodgy stuff about like slavery and pl- like, plantations and things like that, uh, as was popular in the 70s so it kind of blends that mandingo style of of book with the western um caleb thorne the central character is one of the most repellent central characters i've ever come across in a book i'm really intrigued to read more of the series just to see how his character develops but a truly awful awful character some very weird stuff going on in this book um, in terms of his relationship with his mother um, all sorts of crazy stuff going on, but basically he's an appalling character. Um, the book, you know, kind of follows the period just before the Civil War, and there's a Civil War starting, where at, at the start of the book he does something completely unforgivable, but then quite satisfyingly by the end of the book he gets caught out because of it. And I'm intrigued to read the next in the series to see what happens, um, what happens to him next, and if he truly gets his comeuppance. So it was it was a fun, very trashy read, loads of sex and violence. Um, and they are, I think the whole series is available for like 99p each on, on Kindle. So we'll definitely read more of them after my Read What Your Own Challenge is over. Um, so after that, I thought, well, I'll read another Lawrence James book. So also had this um, on the on my TBR card. So this is Hearn the Hunter book three, um, The Black Widow, published under the name John J. McLaglan. Uh, so John J. McLaglan is a pseudonym for Lawrence James and another guy whose name... I think was John Harvey um, from memory. So they were like a writing duo who wrote this Hearn the Hunter series. Um, so this was, again, was was a fun, very trashy West, Western. Um, so in this one, um, Hearn the Hunter, um, who's Je- Je- uh, Jedediah Hearn is his full name. Um, and he's on a, a kind of a mission of revenge. So clearly in the first book, um, his wife is murdered by these seven guys. And I think he tracks them down across the, the course of the first three books. Um, I need to go back and read the first two, um, which I think, again, are available for 99p each on Kindle. Um, but in this one, he gets to like the last two of those seven guys um, who are brothers. And again, there's some weird stuff going on in terms of their relationship with their mother. So I don't know if that was some sort of hang up that, that Lawrence James had. Um, but yeah, this was, again, was, was a fun, trashy, brutal, full of sex and violence, 70s Western from the UK. So I enjoyed that. Um, 
So in terms of currently reading then, um, so uh, as I as I said last week, I'm listening to the audiobook of True Grip by Charles Portis. Um, again for Remember December, so this is listening to or rereading a book in a different format. So I previously read um, True Grit, now listening to the audiobook narrated by the author Donna Tart, which is fantastic. She's a wonderful narrator. Um, so I'm about two thirds of the way through that. I expected to have finished it by this Saturday, but because I've not been very well, I've not been like exercising in the morning and things like that, which is when I tend to listen to audiobooks. So I'm a bit behind on that, but we'll finish that this week, I'm sure. Um, and then also started two of those buddy reads. So I'm reading uh, Dark Gods by T.D. Klein uh, with one of my patrons, Burnout. So this is a very well-respected um, horror book that collects four, I guess I guess they're novellas, four novellas. Um, so we've read the first one, which was called Petey, which was fantastic, really, really creepy. So about this kind of party taking place in this house. But there's there's something really wrong with the house and, and like a horrible backstory to the house, which is like incredibly mysterious and kind of teased out throughout the story. Um, and it's it's one of those stories where you know there's horrible, horrible, creepy stuff happening, but all the characters are kind of oblivious to it. It was really incredibly effective. The thing that's a bit weird about the... So I'm reading the Kindle version of, of Dark Gods is that the order of the stories is different. So there's four stories... The first story in the printed edition is not this one. And I think the printed edition is out of print. And this Kindle edition is a, a relatively new thing. I think it was only republished recently. So it looks like the stories have been printed in a different order. And one of the stories isn't even listed on the table of contents. But apparently is there at the end of the book. So it's all a bit weird. Not a terribly good um, edition of what seems to me so far to be an excellent, excellent book. So yeah, enjoying that. And I've also just started for my... Um, my Patricia Highsmith read through, which I'm doing with Anne from the channel Anne Novella. So uh, Highsmith this month is uh, this month is the Tremor of Forgery, um, which I've just started. So I'm a couple of chapters in, but it's really good so far. Classic Highsmith, this American guy in um, he's in Tunisia rather than Europe in this one. Um, he's he's like there's something a little bit shady about him, but it's hard to say what. Um, and he's just met another American guy who's over in Tunisia. So it's like a completely classic Highsmith setup. So looking forward to, to seeing what happens with that. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure. I will continue with my um, with my with this, this chain of books. So I think uh, next, I'm either going to read this, Open Season by David Osborne, which is about a group of hunters, so kind of a connection to Herman Hunter, or I might read... Uh, a book three in a series if I've got a series that I'm up to book three on but I'm not, I'm not sure I have so we shall see anyway I'm going to leave it there because uh, I'm about to cough might mightily for the last minute or two a cough has been percolating at the back of my throat so I will leave it there and say as always thank you very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon cheerio <laughs>